from Marston Miller, and today we're going to do some miniature horse driving basics. If you've missed my other videos about harnessing and hitching your miniature horse, I'll make sure that there's a link to them at the end of this video because that's going to be a really good tie-in. This is sort of the next step. You have your horse harnessed, you have them safely hitched to the vehicle, now we're going to talk about getting in and driving, some things that we need to consider. Uh, we, one of the first things about getting in is that we want to make sure that the driver never gets in without the reins in their hand. We, want to make, uh, we don't want to trust our, our uh, header because just because I'm here holding him, you still want to have those reins in your hand for your safety and your horse's safety. In, uh, when I was a kid growing up, the other rule that was always really enforced, we were always driving teams at our place, my granddad's rule was nobody gets on that wagon until the driver is, has the reins in his hand and he's seated and he's ready. For safety, the last thing you want is to be in the cart without the reins and no way to control the horse. Uh, you'll also notice that when Christine got in, she very quickly sat down. Uh, our miniature horse carts are carefully balanced so that there's very little weight on your horse's back when you're sitting in the seat. When you're standing in that seat, all your weight is on your miniature horse's back. So you want to make sure that when you get in, you do it quickly and efficiently and get onto that seat to minimize the amount of time that you're putting that pressure on your horse's back. Most, uh, most of the time we drive our miniature horses using the reins, uh, rein handling just like we were riding them. There are lots of other rein handling methods that you could learn about and I highly recommend that you do. Do some research about the Hungarian method, the Achenbach method, and try them out because it's, it's just good education. But in most cases, this is the method that we use in the show ring, in combined driving for your dressage test. It's a really effective way to do it. Uh, what we have is Christine has the reins going between her little finger and her ring finger, up through her hand, and she's pinching it with her thumbs to secure everything in place. This is, we want to keep it right into your hand, not on the tips of your finger, because it gives you a much better line of communication to your horse's mouth. This rein handling is really important and that contact is really important because unlike with a riding horse where you have your seat and your legs to, to communicate with your horse, that is your primary line of communication and your horse really relies on it. When I say contact, that means that you can feel your horse's mouth. It doesn't mean that you're pulling on them, it just means that you have a good feel. You can have a light contact and you can have a heavy contact and that's going to depend a lot on what your horse prefers. I like to talk about contact like if you were uh, walking in a busy parking lot with a toddler, you need to hang on to that toddler because they're not going to, you know, know to stay out of the way of vehicles. So you want to make sure that you have good control over them, but you also don't want to squish their little hand. And that's a good, uh, good that's the, the feel you want when you're talking about contact. You want to have a firm communication, but you're not squeezing it to death because that's going to ruin the soft contact and the, the communication that you're going to have with your horse. So what we don't want to see is loose reins. Loose reins would mean that your horse doesn't have a good communication, a good feel of what you're doing back there. The other thing that Christine has is she is carrying a whip. We always carry a whip with our driving horses because we uh, don't have our legs. The whip is really an important part. We use our whip in place of the, the cues that we would use on their, uh, with our legs if we were riding them. So we always want to carry a whip. It is in the rules in pretty much every sort of showing that you're going to do with your driving horse. When we are in the cart, these carts are very carefully balanced so that they don't put a lot of, of pressure on your horse's back. There should only be like a pound of weight in these shafts when the horse is correctly hitched and you're in the cart. But we can change that balance a lot just with our body position. So if Christine leaned forward, she was driving with, like a farmer with her, her elbows on her, on her knees. That's, you can tell Miller already doesn't like that. He's like, man, why are you putting all that pressure on my back? Instead, we want to sit up nice and straight and keep our weight towards the back of the cart because that's going to lift those shafts and make it much easier for our miniature horse to perform to their potential. We want to sit up nice and straight. It helps sometimes to imagine that you have a hook on top of your head and there's a string going up into the air pulling you up straight. So you don't have to think, I have to sit up straight because that can cause a lot of tension. Instead, you think, no, nope, I'm going to be sitting up straight because that string's holding me there. We want to roll our shoulders back. Can you just roll your shoulders back, Christine? Yeah, yes. That's very pretty. So when we're done driving, we've gone for a beautiful drive and we want to have... Uh, 
we want to get out of our cart, ideally we would have a header, but I know that's not always feasible. We always have to wait for something else to be around to drive our horses we might never get to. So we want to have them in a safe place. We want to do it all. Often what works well is you can do it all the time in the same place so that they get the idea. You can drive them up to a fence. But still, we still want to have good communication with our horse and we want to have those reins in our hands. So you can put them into one, you can put your whip down and put it in the whip holder or into the basket. You can put the reins into one hand so that you're not have, you can have the other hand for balance. And the same thing, we want to get out quickly and efficiently and then we can, like Christine did, move up the reins and then get to his head and you've never lost contact with him. Uh, my granddad always taught me that the most dangerous time for a driving horse and driving is one of the most dangerous sports that you can participate in with your horse <laughs> is when you're hitching and unhitching the horse because we want to make sure that uh, we're either with the horse or we're not. So if you were getting out of the cart and something spooked them and they took off with the, attached to the cart without you there to keep them safe, that's going to be the most dangerous situation. So you want to do everything you can to keep control over the situation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we have uh, lots of other videos are coming up in the future and there are lots of online courses on the new classroom at miniaturehorsemanship.com So go ahead and check it out and if you have any questions, please give us an email and let us know